pop em. Welcome back to the pop em. Don't watch them. Whiskey YouTube show. Continuing in the series. Buffalo Trace mash bill number two. Tater Topics is going to be the name of the new series. Anytime we're talking about those chased bourbons, the ones that people love to display and show their friends and I don't know if it makes them feel good about themselves. Tater topics. Today's topic, Elmer T. Lee, as we continue the Mash Bill number two series. Go check out the uh, first was Hancock's Reserve. Go check that one out. To me, the most underrated of the line in Mash Bill 2. Today, we're going to get into the, in my opinion, most overrated of mash bill number two big shout out to adam fayard guys go follow his instagram if you love food he is the ultimate foodie he does reviews on po'boys roast beef po'boys fried seafood po'boys all over restaurants in the new orleans and louisiana area documents his travels go check him out on instagram adam underscore Fayard, that's F-A-Y-A-R-D, go check him out, but without further ado, let's get into Elmer T. Lee, so who was the infamous Elmer T. Lee, so he was the master distiller of Buffalo Trace 36 years, that's right, 36 years before Buffalo, you know, that that's, that's, that's history, because he retired in 1985, that's before I was even born, now, what made him popular, he was the one that really was responsible for, for first mass-producing single-barrel bourbon. And that single-barrel bourbon was, of course, Blanton's. He was the one that made it popular, polarized it, and now here we are today, as you can tell, 35 years later, 36, 37 years later, and single barrel bourbon now is, I mean, I would not feel crazy in saying that's the number one thing in bourbon right now. Single barrel picks, single barrel bourbon. I think people get in, the, they think single barrel, they're like, oh man, it's a single barrel, so it's special. But what you got to realize, especially if you're doing a barrel pick, you got to know who's picking those barrels. Because if you just put together a, a barrel pick, it doesn't always mean it's going to be great just because it's a single barrel. When Elmer T. Lee was picking single barrels, he was picking the best possible barrels. You could have two barrels in a warehouse, same floor, right next to each other, distilled on the same day, same batch, and have two totally different profiles. Sometimes blending is better than single barrels. It blends characteristics of maybe an okay barrel, with the characteristics of a better barrel, making it a great blend. So you got to be careful when it comes to single barrels. But Elmer T. Lee, so this one's 90 proof. Like I said, mash bill number two, that's that high rye mash bill. Retails $40 to $60. Forget about it. You're lucky if you get it under $250. And that's why I think it is the most overrated bourbon in the mash bill two series. People could say Blanton's. I'm not going to say Blanton's is overrated. Blanton's is just overhyped. People are just going crazy when they get into bourbon. For some reason, Blanton's is the bottle they want. I don't know if they want to collect the horses or what it is about Blanton's. But when people get into bourbon, that is the one they're going for. So I really don't want to say it's over. It's definitely overhyped, but this is definitely overrated. Because, you know, people's not out there saying Blanton's is, you know, incredible. And they're not paying three, up close to $300 for it like they are Elmer T. Lee. People go insane uh, for Elmer T. Lee. So, 90 proof. Let's get into Elmer T. Lee. So, very sweet Buffalo Trace-esque nose. So, single barrel. So, it could vary barrel, uh, bottle to bottle. This one I'm getting a very, very strong 
that Buffalo Trace candy strawberry note, but this is almost coming off tropical. It's, it's almost close to pineapple. Now, as you can see, this has been open, this bottle's been open for a while. You're looking at at least two to three years open on this bottle. And when I talked about this in my Hancock series, I, I don't know if maybe down south, guys, let me know in the comments if you live in a drier climate, do you find your bottles turn? Because I've yet to have a bottle turn. We're talking three years, even at that low. I don't know, maybe because we have high humidity here in Louisiana. This is just me throwing some hypotheses out there. I'm just saying, if you live in a drier climate, do you find maybe it turns faster? I don't know. But none of these, these are still full flavored profiles, open two to three years in that low in the bottle. Because the nose is, I mean, look, great nose. Great nose. Tons of caramels. But yeah, coming off tropical, very tropical. That's a, I don't remember getting that. It's been a while since I revisited Elmer T. Lee. This will also be in the sample pack for March 2022 on my patron page. Go check it out if you want to become a patron. Yeah. I couldn't imagine paying $300 for this bottle, opening it up, which we know most of you paying $300 for this, you're probably not even going to open it. You're putting it on your shelf to look at. I would be sick, sick to my stomach if I paid $300 for this bottle and tasted this bourbon. So we're two in in the series, and like I said, 88.9 proof Hancock's blows it out the water. In my opinion, okay, don't get your feelings hurt, it's just my opinion, I think Hancox blows the Elmer T. Lee out of the water, easily. I mean, it's, it's not viscous at all, it's watery on the palate, no finish, tad bit of spice, and I'm getting that little bit of tropical pineapple, strawberry note. And a little bit of vanillas and caramels. That's it. So that's your review on Elmer T. Lee. There's really nothing complex to get into. That's it. Next up, my favorite of the series, Rock Hill Farms. At 100 proof, another single barrel. I don't know if it's just that mash bill, but at 100 proof, I think Rock Hill Farms, now that... That is a good one. Cannot wait to do a review on that one and get into it. That'll be next. But closing out, Tater Topics episode number two. Guys, Mashville number two, Buffalo Trace. Pop! Don't watch.